Alrighty, so why am I going to do the daily vlogging thing? So looking back over my life, my personality is one of someone who is sort of intellectual, very creative thinking. And so for me, the real challenge is to turn a creative thought into something that is consumable, some sort of product, whether it is a book or a video or, or a course or something. And looking back over my life, my most productive period was from about mid-2009 to about the middle of 2013, where primarily um, I was writing a, a near daily blog. And I often found that sort of pressure of trying to produce something almost daily forced me into a mode where I had to produce something. And even when I didn't have ideas or didn't have answers to things, the very process of creation and forced him into that place where he had to do something, I actually so many times got answers to questions halfway through writing a blog post where an idea would come or an insight would come and that would be the solution. And I often started things without any idea of what the actual answer was. So part of the things that I've just learned about myself is that I need this sort of deadline, this sort of adrenaline rush to actually kickstart and propel the whole creative process for me. And I think this is common to uh, many, many creative people. I mean, this is something I saw Louis C.K. say something about at his eulogy for George Carlin. I'm listening and they ask him, um, how'd you, how'd you, how do you do all this material? And I'm like, eh. and, I, and I hear him and he says, well, I just decided every year I'd be working on that year's special and I'd do the special, and then I'd just chuck out the material, and I'd start again with nothing. And I thought, that's crazy, how do you throw away? It took me 15 years to build this shitty hour. <laughs> if I throw it away, I got nothing. And as just a, an additional thought, writing is by no means dead, but everything is far more heading to video. And to be honest, I just love YouTube. I just love YouTube. <clears throat> Alrighty, so fast. And then the beginning of 2016, I had my heart attack. And it's about a year later from then. I'm almost coming up to the one year anniversary. So that just covered five years in one sentence. So just to give you a little of the back picture. So my focus has been primarily on writing about relationships and sex and marriage. And I've produced books and I, and I do coaching and I'm, you know, pretty much successful at helping people improve their marriages. I'm, I have a really good skill set with that. But what I'm starting to really increasingly find and sort of struggle with is that I am, uh, people getting in contact with me too late. I'm sort of like a marriage firefighter. I'm, people aren't calling me until it's a 911 situation. Rather than being a, a marriage firefighter, I would much, much rather be sort of a marriage fire marshal where my role is to be to work on prevention and make sure that people don't get into situations where it all starts burning to the ground to actually ensure that crises don't happen because I've been able to be proactive and preventative. One of the things I've really learned over you know the last five, six years in particular is that very often what turns into a relationship issue is really a a life issue. It's something to do with their whole life rather than the marriage. I mean, a really classic one of that is people, you know, years ago, they bought the big, big house that they didn't really have much business buying. Uh, they've struggled to hold on to it. Something else bad happens in their life. They have some kind of setback. And then they slowly spiral into bankruptcy and foreclosure. And it's the bankruptcy and the foreclosure that, you know, does the real damage to the relationship. So by the time people are calling me then, the real problem was all the way back when they brought the house that was too big, when they got suckered into that. And it leaves me with little to do in terms of being able to truly fix that problem at the end of it. And this is super common. We live in this giant commercial ecosystem where we are encouraged and propelled to buy more, consume more, get more of this, wear more of those. You, you have to go to these places and have these things. And it really does seem that uh, every dollar we make 
is just being actively milked for as many pennies as they can get by a bunch of you know multinational corporations and and the banking system meanwhile we're just fed this absolute smokescreen of disinformation about what we should be doing, how we should be doing it, what we should commit to. And we are in this endless dopamine haze of new things constantly happening. We're all checking our phones in us. They probably, if you're like, like me and everyone else, you will tend to wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is check your phone. Um, and we're just in this, this haze of social media drama and hype. And I mean, just look at every new movie that comes out. There is an absolute hype train that can last for six months or a year before the movie even gets to the theaters. And then we go see the movie. And then after the movie, we have this sort of, you know, post event emotional crash because somehow $10 that we spent on a two hour movie uh, didn't take away our sort of existential dread and angst for simply being alive. So in that ecosystem of more, 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 now, 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 check your phones, dopamine haze, one of the few things that can actually bring us real happiness is our relationships. You know, because you can't replace warmth and intimacy with another real person who loves you and is intimate and connected to you by buying more things, having more stuff, checking your phone, and being in this constant media cycle. And speaking as someone that's had a heart attack and has gotten to lay awake at night looking at the ceiling tiles in ICU, I can assure you that when you're in that position, you are not going to be worried about how many followers you have. You're not going to be worried about the car you drive. You're not going to be worried about whether you got to see the next movie that's coming out. The only thing that will matter to you that you will be thinking about is your, your family, your husband, your wife, your children. So tying that all together, I'm going to start the challenge of producing some kind of daily vlog. And I, and I think blogs come in three main types. I think there are the ones that are mostly focused on feelings, the ones that are mostly focused on thoughts, and there are the ones that are focused on uh, some kind of action and activity. And I think for me, over time, I will probably be more focused on thoughts. And as my health gets better, it will slowly transition into more of an action vlog. And overall, I just feel better when I produce. I've noticed over the last you know month and a half when my production on videos has come up, I'm actually truly feeling better, like I am doing the right thing. I'm feeling more energized. I'm feeling happier, like I'm doing what I should be doing. I do have one big caveat, though. Uh, what I've seen over and over again with the people that start daily vlogs is that they burn out and crash or have some sort of breakdown. And I do not want that to happen to me. I've, I've had my tune in the barrel of doing too much and having a big breakdown. So probably my Sunday vlog will be uh, pre-recorded. I won't be on a daily schedule with that. I still want to produce something, but that's probably all going to be pre-recorded in the week ahead of time. So overall, um, I'm still really, really interested in relationships, but this is going to be, as I go forward, a little bit more about the, the world in which we have our relationships. And so that's the plan. Going to start it. Going to see what happens. Um, right now, I have a, a tiny handful of subscribers on YouTube. And for you people, thank you so much for being here. I truly do appreciate it. And I know I got crap gear. No skills, no real planning. I'm still sort of recovering from a heart attack. And I will see you tomorrow. Certainty of death, small chance of success. What are we waiting for?